Hey everybody, welcome to the first ever Pokemon Legends Arceus RNG manipulation video on how to exploit shiny frames and outbreaks in order to get a shiny in outbreaks, which is incredible. We finally found a way to manipulate how outbreaks work. When you go into a map, the outbreak that is there is not predetermined. It's not. As contrary to belief, contrary to popular belief that has been promoted so far. It looks like today on stream we discovered that this is not the case and we are able to change and manipulate the Pokemon that spawn in an outbreak. Let's show you guys how. So this all started on stream earlier today. At the very, very beginning of my stream, I came over to Cobalt Coastlands and I tried to farm myself a quick shiny from the Perugly uh, outbreak there. But what I didn't know was, I obviously didn't know I was going to get a shiny first of all, but second of all, I failed the shiny. So here's the interesting thing, guys. When you fail a shiny, it changes the possible spawns of the outbreak. And it's not only a shiny, when you fail any Pokemon, and a Pokemon despawns, you change some of the spawns that come next, okay? And if you fight a Pokemon and kill it, you also change the spawns. And if you catch a Pokemon, you also change the spawns. So those are the three factors here. This is the first time I found this shiny, guys. And this is something we didn't know, actually. This is something we spent the whole stream testing. So here you can see I failed, you can see in my face, I failed the shiny, I didn't expect him to just despawn straight away. So I thought I'll go ahead and reset my game, which I expect to be able to get the exact same Pokemon again, because that's what we believed would be the case so far, right? So I go ahead and I reset my game and we come back twice more to try and get this shiny. So all I did up to this point here was I reset my game, loaded it back up, which was a save at the camp at the beginning of Cobalt Coastlands. And I come back hoping and expecting to get my shiny, but it's not here this time. I catch all the Pokemon. In fact, I don't catch all of them. I let some of them get away, which is the reason my shiny did not spawn. And this is something we've concluded from testing today on stream. But don't worry, I'll explain how we can manipulate to get shinies back because I also do that to these Perugly in two more attempts. So as you can see, we caught everything except for one or two that did despawn here. And our shiny hasn't spawned. Our shiny has not respawned because perhaps we messed up on one of the correct lines of Pokemon that can spawn. And I'll explain the lines in a second. But I come back a third time, guys. Just another simple reset. I come back a third time. This Pokemon behind the tree is in the way. It, some Pokemon may despawn. I miss my balls a lot. And there goes a despawn right there, so that's no good. That's going to change the Pokemon that spawn after it, which is most likely my shiny. As you can see, we did this and we don't get a shiny again. We've almost finished this outbreak. No new Pokemon are spawning after that. And we did not get our shiny back. So I was really interested. Why? Why, why did that happen? Interesting enough, on the fourth attempt, I did manage to secure every catch and I did manage to make my shiny respawn. So that was pretty thrilling. And I was putting it together over the course of the stream testing this. And you can see it happened right here on camera. It's going to be right beside my camera in just a second after we catch these last couple of Peruglies here. Because it's towards the end of the outbreak. And there it is. Bam. There's our shiny back. And all I did was reset my game and come back to get it. So yes, you can manipulate the different Pokemon spawns in one outbreak without going back to the village. So how? Well, it was really necessary to try this with another Pokemon outbreak. So we did and we tested it with the Star Raptor outbreak. And what turned out to be the case in order to spawn our shiny, we had to catch the first Pokemon and we had to battle the three or four Pokemon that came after that. So I don't think this is my first try on getting the shiny, but we do catch the first Pokemon and then we battle the next three, as you can see us doing right here. We battle the next three, we knock them all out with our Samurott, who doesn't faint, by the way, in this battle, which I think may or may not be important. We still need more testing on that. However, catching the very first Star Raptor of the batch was extremely important, and battling the next three or four was also extremely important in making sure the shiny spawned after that. Because when we did variations of this, when we did not catch the first Pokemon, when we failed the catch, when we fainted and we, we fought different Pokemon, when we fought all four, we did not get our shiny. So many different things we tried and we did not get our shiny when we changed it. But as you can see, we got our shiny this time because we caught the first one and battled the three. Now, there are some differences that can happen that are okay, that are acceptable, that you'll still get your shiny. So this is the very, very important moment where we really started honing in on our research on this RNG manipulation. This is the first time I'm encountering the Star Raptor outbreak in this map here. I've saved, hard save, back at the camp, 
because we're not supposed to have to leave this at all. I think leaving actually does change the spawns anyway. But either way, guys, we go ahead and try to catch them because I don't know what to expect. I do not know I'm going to be getting a shiny. And the important factor here is I caught one of the Star Raptors in the first four batch. Another one spawns, which was fine. And we end up battling all four. So let's go ahead and battle all four. Now, what we concluded from a lot of testing, and I'll show you me encountering the same shiny raptor over and over again as well, just to prove the point, which we did on stream here. The factors that determine whether or not you got a shiny in this batch, the next batch actually after you kill these first four, is either catching a Pokemon, battling and fainting them, or making them despawn. Now these three things determine whether a Pokemon in the next, in le next in line in essence, is going to be a shiny or not, but there's no way yet to know what way you have to go in order to make that Pokemon shiny. So I happened to get lucky that I caught the first one, which was an important factor in determining whether or not this Pokemon was shiny. Now, interestingly enough, in a bunch of tests, I didn't battle four Star Raptor after I caught the first one, but catching the first one was always the most important factor because when we didn't catch the first one, we did not get our shiny to spawn. Fighting the first four or three and fainting them only did not spawn the shiny after this. Uh, attacking the Pokemon outside of the outbreak first, which I thought initially was a factor that was important, doesn't matter at all. We proved that it doesn't matter. So only interacting with the Pokemon in the outbreak is what matters. And we managed to make this Star Raptor spawn the first time. So let's see him making him spawn again. All right, so here we are again, encountering the same Star Raptor outbreak in the same instance of the map. And I try to catch the first one here. I go ahead and I catch it. And now I know, okay, yes. Now we only have to battle them. So let's battle them because I know since I caught the first one and here you can see me, I'm battling three instead of four like we did the first time we encountered the shiny and the three was fine. So there is some leeway to making changes in order to continue getting the shiny either way. It's not exactly precise. That's the important details. But like I said, the three, the three factors matter. It's either going to be catching them, fighting them to faint, are letting them disappear, which of course not all Pokemon can do. And they're the only three things that seem to influence this because we managed to fail getting the shiny to respawn when we messed up those different factors too much. But again, we did manage to exclude certain things, which is also really important. The weather is excluded. The weather does not seem to influence frame skipping or the RNG and getting the shiny to appear. Uh, attacking other Pokemon first or, or anything before coming to the outbreak does not seem to matter. And as you can see, we got the shiny to spawn once again, which is a really, really important deal here because we're controlling our spawn here. We're making sure the shiny spawns. It's not a random coincidence. So again, here I am in another battle once again with three Star Raptors having, having caught the first one. We knock them all out like before, and you'll be able to tell from the, this whole video that these are all different instances. These are all different cases of me getting the actual shiny. So let's just, let's just keep going and kill this. And you'll see the shiny spawn once again. And this time we can see that there's rain and the shaking tree and bam, there's our shiny right there behind. And as you can see, we did manage to make it. So again, that's how we rule that weather. And guys, here we are again at a failed version. Okay, this is a failed test. And you can see I'm battling four Star Raptor up above. That's very, very important because I wanted to include footage of me failing to get a shiny from this, which I think is very, very important for this. These again, I failed catching. I did not catch any of the Star Raptor in this instance. We kill out the whole four. This is the first four. And we see if we get our shiny to spawn. And sure enough, it does not. No shiny this time. That's very, very important, guys. So the fact that I caught the first Pokeball, caught the first Pokemon each time that made the shiny spawn was the important factor. So one other important thing to know about these Pokemon is the Pokemon that you catch that is shiny is always going to be the exact same Pokemon. It doesn't change the shininess of another Pokemon. This is that Star Raptor right here. This is level 36. It's 34. It's 47.7 pounds. It's rash, okay? And that when we caught that multiple times and all the forced uh, spawns that we manipulated was always the exact same shiny. So this shiny is predetermined somewhere in the list. Now let's talk about what I think is happening here. This is my best theory of to what's happening here. We have all the same Pokemon in an outbreak. There's four different Pokemon at one time, and you're gonna start off with the first four in a row. Sometimes that first one is a shiny, of course, but the shiny is gonna be somewhere in one row of Pokemon. So let's say, for example, if I kill this Pokemon, I get to the next Pokemon here. 
But if I kill this Pokemon, I'm not going to get these Pokemon here. I'm going to get this Pokemon right here, okay? That's what I think is happening, but it's a little more complicated than that. The reason I caught one and I ended up battling four mattered because we ended up getting a fresh spawn of the all, all four, right? But catching one seemed to influence it as well. So what's going on there? Well, let's just keep it simple first. Let's just say I caught one and I battle four. We get the fresh spawn of four and that's where our shiny Star Raptor was. But let's say I only caught ones that were spawning from this row right here. And I kept going down here and there was no shiny here. Well, I would have missed this one because I never touched the first row. Okay, that's probably what's wrong here. Now, another thing is, which happened in the Perugly footage that you probably saw earlier, was that if I catch this and this despawns, there's a time where if I caught this one as well, in the meantime, another one from this row can spawn. So theoretically, this one is running away and it despawns, but I caught this one already. I could have got one to spawn here from this row, and then I got the second one to spawn afterwards when I was finished catching this one because of the time difference between this despawning and me having caught two of these. Okay, so that's probably what happened uh, in my Perugly situation and probably the reason why I didn't get my shiny again. That's a possibility. So either way, guys, we want to try and do our best to make sure we keep this shiny on our radar. So what I think was happening with the Star Raptors was I Pokeballed this, which was an important factor. I battled this, this, and this, and we ended up getting the shiny in the next group. Guys, this is ultimately the very beginning of RNG seed manipulation in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Hopefully a lot of you folks try and test some stuff in the game. Once you leave this video, you can safely know that if you do encounter a shiny and you want to test, you will, once you have saved at the camp before encountering the shiny and before encountering the outbreak, you will be able to get it back by simply repeating exactly what you did in the first place that got you that shiny. So no matter what happens, once you repeat close enough, and again, like I said, there is Space for some deviation. Once you try to replicate exactly what you did to get the shiny in the first place, you will be able to get it again. But when you test and you try completely different things, you probably will find that you will not get a shiny, but you may get lucky and find a sh different shiny at a different instance in the outbreak. So there's a lot of testing to happen here, and that's the reason I'm making this video. Hopefully the community tries this as well, like we did on stream. As you saw from our footage, we did manage to get the shiny to spawn over and over again multiple times, and I did catch it in the end uh, just to finish off the stream. So guys, thank you everybody for watching. Hopefully this was an extremely interesting video and hopefully there are new findings coming out of from this video as we go. It's exciting times. We can definitely confirm fact that interacting with the Pokemon in the outbreak is what influences it and that these outbreaks are determined by seeds and rows. So guys, let me know what your thoughts are on this. Thanks for watching. Drop a sub and I'll see you guys around the next video. Till then, bye!